So, how was your fourth? It's a lot like the um, like the first, or a lot like the seventh and the eighth. <clears throat> right. So nothing spectacular. I was off of work. Basically. Nothing spectacular. Basically. You know, I saw. Uh, <clears throat> I went and watched some some local fireworks. I'm sorry. Traction and. Um, I'm sorry. Was it at the usual spot that everybody in town goes to? The place that really doesn't need the money, but does it anyway. I don't know. I wonder. How, you know they don't charge for that stuff. That's gotta cost thousands. You know, but uh, something that caught me off guard. Where you can park on the interstate and watch them. And maybe over I'm there. You know what I'm talking about, right? And yeah. maybe you, maybe I'm not up on. Obviously, I'm not up on the the fireworks thing, but because when I saw shapes, it blew me away. I didn't know they. I didn't know they did that. I yeah. saw I saw a smiley face. I saw a heart. That was about it. I think you saw but, a heart. Yeah. I saw did they do barracuda? Right. <laughs> Ooh, barracuda. Speaking of fireworks, uh, Katy Perry. This, this, uh, this month. I think it was last week. Uh, <clears throat> well, it would have to be, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's this month. Well, the fireworks stands have been open now for at least a couple of weeks, and you know where we live, it's well, like, baby, I'd love to pay the rent, but the fireworks right. stands open right now. Well, this is a big firework, and uh, it was a meteor, the size of a golf cart. And it hit off the the off of the coast of Seattle, somewhere in that area. Really? Yeah. And the interesting thing about it did it? Please tell me it took out Pearl Jam. <laughs> no, Eddie. Why? What's wrong with Eddie? Why? What's wrong? Why? With Eddie? He's he's got a little he's a little heavy on the vibrato. Well, he's oh, just a little heavy agree. on the whys. Why? But anyway, yeah, the size of so a golf cart, <clears throat> and the the um, that's a that's a pretty good size meteor, and it and it didn't like burn up, come through. I mean, don't don't we get hit like on a, a regular basis with you know meteor type stuff coming through the atmosphere, but it burns up constantly before it gets to the and ground. So when they say the so. size of a golf cart and it hit the o- <coughs> it hit the ocean, uh, well, it's pretty big, but it hit water. So I guess they're hoping it. it so to say how off far enough. off the like the coast it was, like I'm not sure. Huh. Wow. But the interesting thing is even NASA got involved. Now, they're not in the business of chasing down every meteor that falls. Um, well, are we sure it was a meteor? Okay, but then they decide to get an underwater dive team and a little mini submarine or something like this and go hunt this thing. Why? That's did, just this, a, did, this, did this golf cart to my knowledge, meteor have a Tesla logo on it? Right, no. Hmm. So to my knowledge... NASA's never done anything like this. Why were they so interested? Well, in that this? you know about. I I looked I looked for it. I I couldn't find anything that they went and hunted, tried to hunt a meteor, and went and tried to fish it out of the ocean. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure Google knows. Something else is fascinating <clears throat> though is that they said uh, their findings was just tiny little pieces. Okay, and they expected mm. to find pieces the size of bricks. And I guess, uh, you know, if it's valuable, which some meteorites can be, you know, a thousand a gram. Really? $50 to a thousand a gram. It's like that Kush. Well, so that's way more than gold, <laughs> you know, if you have the right kind, I guess. I don't know what exactly you look for. Um, yeah, I'm not, not an expert metals in that field. And, and, their, and their value, but. But the point is, they found. <laughs> Little tiny pebbles, few of those, hmm. and then they said, "Ah, that's it, nothing there. We're not going back." It was the size of a golf cart. You found some tiny pebbles that just basically looked like rocks, and now they're saying, "Well, they're not hunting anymore." <coughs> they're just like, "Oh yeah, we eh, we didn't find anything." I just I just find it odd. I I think it's a matter of controlled and controlled in information. Uh, it's like just, everything else, man. You, I just they, question: Was it a meteorite? You're allowed to know what you're allowed to know. The rest of it, don't worry about I'm it. Just Somebody question: else. Was it a meteorite? They've never hunted one before. What they, are, they, are you? Are they, you leaning towards it? Might be some kind of a craft of some sort. And this not is not natural. cheap to do. They've never done it before, and it's not cheap to do. Why do it now and then release? Oh, it was just these little pieces, and uh, we're done. We're done here. Nothing to see. Move along. Hmm. I don't know. Just kind of odd. 
That is odd. That is odd. It's uh, so damn damn shame about that Pearl Jam though. I was, I was really <laughs> sorry, but enough is enough. Speaking of bands, uh, System of a Down posted a photo um, of them in the studio or something, but they're now, not. But they're not releasing that. Hey, this is what we're doing. They haven't said anything, so it could the interesting be. Interesting thing know, is, like three weeks ago or so, Surge came out and was like. He has a bunch of songs that he's written for the band, but he's going to go ahead and record them for, a, like, a solo album. Yeah, it was, like, June 22nd or something like that. And it's like, what? What Was it Serge or was it so the then, guitarist? No, it was Serge. Serge. Because it wasn't, the, it wasn't, was his name, to, um, I can't remember his name now. It's a very interesting name. The guitarist has a Malachian. solo, has a solo project. Darren, is it, is it Darren, Darren Malakian? Anyway. Card. That's the reason I asked. Was it Serge? Because the guitarist has a solo project, and he actually wrote and recorded, you know, practically a whole album or more, and then released it way later, like it, like recently released it. And he's been really? sitting on the music and not doing anything with it. Well, Serge and, uh, did a solo album. What was it? Two thousand nine, I think it was. And same time as Sully, Erna did one, and it was like both of them was a big. Mm, sorry, guys. I never heard. Of, uh, I, I I know he did one, but I haven't listened to Sully's. Yeah, it was a yawn fest in in my department. I'm, and that's for but I'm I'm more you know. And that's Sully from Godsmack. <clears throat> yeah, as opposed to Sully from Led Zeppelin. Sully, yeah. there was a Sully. I'm sorry, the, that Greta Van, what the, no. Greta Van Zant. Greta who? What is it? Greta Van Fleet. The grated cheese, something. Oh, grated cheese. Oh, Gre- you know, Greta Van Fleet is is named after some. Uh, I guess a lady who lives in the town where they live. She's just. They asked her, "Can we use your name for our band?" And they're like, "She was like, of course, right on." So it's Greta Van Fleet, and it's three brothers: bass player, guitar player, and vocalist. Are brothers? At least they all have the same last name, so I'm going to assume that they're brothers. And then the drummer, who is not a brother, but anyway, yeah, they're in. They're actually brother from another mother. They're yeah, something like that. They're he's a, or a sister from another mister. They're um recording a new album or or a, actually a full length album I think now and uh, um I don't know how to take it, man, because I I, li- I like them. I, you know when they come on the radio, as long as they don't play them every hour on the hour like they do Shine Down and Shine Down. Now this is uh this is the band that that people alike to. Led Zeppelin. They say they sound like Led Zeppelin, or oh, the, sing- it's, it's, the singer sounds like Robert it's Plant. It's like a a, re- a rebirth of them, as far as sound goes. Um, their their first, I guess, EP. I think it was five or six songs. Um, they blatantly like really showed their influence, you know. Um, down to even you know the word you know using the words mama and and things like that. You and know. they're young, right? They're like they're high school I think kids, they just graduated it? high school last last year, so they've been around wow. now for about a year as far as being out in the main mainstream public eye. Um, wow. They're they were together for about five years, and then I think they formed in I want to say twenty twelve. Now, if they're all brothers, though, somebody had to be graduated already because unless mom popped out triplets and they all look different. You know what I mean? So the, I don't know their ages, but <clears throat> I know that one or two of them just graduated last year, um, and that's when their you know tour came off. They they uh, played here recently, right? Um, they played here last October, so it's it's been a minute, and it sold out in like minutes because at the the uh, the show went on sale at the height of their. So now what song. what I heard uh, was that you know. They didn't set out to get a record deal. They just recorded a demo, and it got them signed, and now they're scurrying, trying to track a record, create a record. You know, I don't know. I would, uh, I would, I know that they had songs already uh, written from, you know, back when they had formed. Um, I'm not sure which of those, if any, made the EP or if any of them are going to be rehashed and refined and put on. You know, when you go on tour like that, even, even if it's a short, three or three or four month tour i mean you know from back in the day when we did it um when you go on a tour and you're playing you know four or five gigs a week you tend to get a lot better at your instrument you know you get a lot more confidence you you just it just become like for me for me when we would play out a lot playing guitar uh just it was i didn't even have to think about it because we did it so much 
and I'm sure it was like that for you with the vocals, you know. Um, it just came more like a second nature to it's you. It's like tying your shoes. Yeah. You don't even look. And, know, and so, just... you know, that's part of what was good about them, you know, pushing out a EP real fast, like five, six songs, and then going on a tour is, you know, they're going to come back and hopefully not try to mimic Led Zeppelin's nuances as much. But, I mean, I, I hope they maintain the tone you know the overall sound because it is a cool tone you know and and like the guitarist is uh influenced of course by page and johnny lee uh hooker things like you know blues guys you know um and and which is great you don't hear of anybody that age group these days being influenced by the greats from that i was influenced by or that my you know my older brother might have been influenced by <clears throat> um, when, when you're bringing up uh influences uh it reminds me that i've read I read an interview with Robert Plant, and he was asked in the interview, uh, "What you know? What is it? What what are his thoughts on Greta Van Fleet?" And uh, you know, he, I, I'm not quoting him, but he basically was saying, "Screw these guys," well, because well, let me finish. Because <coughs> apparently, he either met them or. Or he read an interview. Robert Plant read an interview they did. Yeah. And when when someone was questioning them about influences, they didn't even mention Led Zeppelin or well, that, Robert Plant. I think it was a joke. I and think so it he's, was. He's kind of butt hurt. I guess. I think the vocalist. I, I want to say his name, name is Josh or something like that. Something of that sort. But Robert um, Plant, he's he took it serious. There was an he interview was, done. Uh, Robert Plant was going on tour or or doing a show, something of that nature, um, for an album he he's put out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me and um and they asked him you know what do you think about this Greta Van Fleet and he was like oh that kid I effing hate that kid you know he's like and it, he didn't mean it like I want to beat him up but like oh he's so talented at that age right. you know wow I, I can't hate I, it's like me when I see when a eight-year-old you know playing you know Randy Rhodes it's like stop I'm delete this video man I don't now even, I, I I I saw that part I read and then that he, um, they And then it goes on. He even brought up, he was like, yeah, I read an interview that this kid did with so-and-so. And he said, you know, name, you know, what's your what's your biggest influence? And he says, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. Now, you know that had to be a joke. Like You're saying Greta Van Fleet was joking. The vocalist. I'm sure that the vocalist was just, yeah, the vocalist from Greta Van Fleet said that his primary influence was steven tyler well robert plant Aerosmith. robert that's plant funny. didn't that's, take that's it funny well robert plant didn't take it that of way. course not um it, but and i listen this is pure speculation on my part and i understand that <coughs> and maybe he was joking but we all know how bands can kind of shy away from getting typecast or getting uh, getting it's very important, getting yes. grouped <clears throat> into a certain genre or box, like, like Deftones with new metal. Okay, there they you hate go. Being called new metal, yeah. And so, with that being said, and the age of these kids, how young they are, yeah, egos are running rampant. You know, when you're that age, yeah. and so he may have been joking, but I don't think so, due to their age and due to how much they sound like Zeppelin. And and they must get that everywhere they go, every show, someone, somewhere, every day, says something to them about, about Zepp. So, well, that might have been why he kind of probably went this smart-ass route on that answer and said, you know, you know, I mean, he could have said Paul Rogers from Bad Company. Yeah. You know what I mean? He could have just said something goofy like that. <laughs> all right. it, it, we all know where is what his influences are. Why even ask what his influences are? Hey, my uh, my grandmother met Bad Company when they flew in really? one time. Yeah, she was she what was, here in here in town. She was at the airport. Yeah, and wow. met them and got their signatures for me. And she said, uh, "Hey, my grandson's he's a songwriter. Do you have any or a musician?" I guess she said. She said, uh, and at this time I was like twenty or something. Oh wow! So and, we were uh, together then. Yeah, we were yeah. in a band and. Um, do you have any uh, advice for him? And he's like, yeah, uh, tell him, write his own music, write a lot, and just write. Just write your own <clears throat> stuff. Don't play other people's stuff. Write your own and stuff and do it Do it as much as you can and, and gather up as much uh, material as you can that you've written on your own. 
and to always advice. get the songwriting credit on the song because then no, you get he, paid twice. Well, he didn't go into the legal ramifications of anything. I know. I'm just saying. Because, you know, the songwriter gets paid twice. Mm. The vocalist, if the vocalist writes the song, say the vocalist and the guitarist, i.e. Creed. Okay? Yeah, that's where your R- royalties, writes the song, that's where your royalties yeah, that's, come from. That's, that's where your double residge. paycheck comes. Residge. You, you yes. want your residge? I was tracking vocals in Memphis uh, one time, and I'm sitting one building over. We're having lunch in this little bar. And I think I was eating chili or something. And he was waiting on the first check from uh, Evanescent's first Evanescence first record, Fallen. And he was to get 1% of sales for each quarter till the end of time on that first record because he found them and brought them to the label. He, he recorded their demos and hmm. got them signed. Now, he, he he was sitting there like this, eating lunch. You know, he knew the check was coming that yeah. day. And the the uh, the mail truck goes by to the studio next door. He sees it go by, and he, he jumps up. He <laughs> jumps up out of his chair, and he books it out the door. And I'm just like, oh, man, this is well, that, crazy. That was back – that must have been back when they had – that they record had, they had been out for a, like a couple of minutes but yeah, that was it right the record had yeah. it, i mean it I had mean, been out for stones. a while i mean it was all over the radio so yeah. he chases the mail truck he comes back and sits down <laughs> that's back, awesome uh, he comes back and sits down with me rips it open and it was this giant check and it said wind up records and it had the big key on it the logo wow, yeah yeah and it said you know one percent of sales for you know quarter one wow. or whatever and it was a, over a hundred and sixty thousand dollars Wow. And he goes, this right here pays off my wife's uh, uh, law school. I wonder if, if he knew in advance, like, the size, you know, the amount. No, like, later if they, on, like, let him know that, hey, we're mailing you a check. It's going to be for, like, 160 grand. No, later on when I was there, because I was there for many weeks, um, uh, he mentioned that he got a he got a bad deal, that he should have – that most, most – uh, most producers in his position, and he spoke with his lawyer about this and everything that he should have went. He should have went for a higher percentage because what he got is the lowest, and it's not standard at all, not even close. And he he regretted doing that. It was his first band that he had ever gotten a deal, and they became so big he just didn't know. So he was so excited to get the deal that he just signed whatever. But he said, "I won't ever do that again." He said, "The problem is I may not have that chance again." So yeah, he was kicking himself. So he totally regrets that. Then, huh? Yeah, I'm just Get fishing. Damn, millful. Who put the straw in this? <coughs> you, you're fired. Get out. Uh, no, that those pens are ours. Leave them. I mean, my voice might sound like this when I do give it up, but it's okay. <laughs> I can do Michael Jackson. Propofol. Damn, why do you have to go there, man? Prince. <laughs> that's right. No, that's fentanyl. Um, <clears throat> so we got we got a little. I'm gonna have to go to my notes, man, because I'm old. My memory shot. That's okay. You know, I'm, uh, hey, no you, shame in the you game. You know how it is, man. Business owner, you got so much running through your head all day, running through your head. Even though you're off of work, you like you shut the doors, you're back home, you're chilling. Work's still running through your head like crazy, right? And it's just like you don't turn it off. So what we got? So I got I got some notes I got to go over, man. Just just some you know liner notes I wanted to talk about maybe. Some of you might be interested. Um, well, new Devil Driver album came out last weekend, last Friday actually. Uh, it's a, it's called Outlaws Till the End. Uh, now, Devil Driver is the vocalists from Cold Chamber. Um, anyway, it's a cover album. Or sorry, it's an album comprised of country music covers that are done totally like Devil Driver music. Those are basically take all take their same music that they've always done hard heavy like just rah, you know crazy music this this pounding and throw in your favorite country songs from back in the day i'm talking you know willie nelson i mean talking so you know, they just decided old school to johnny cash stuff like that but completely different direction. throw in the lyrics and overall melodies but in a hardcore metal devil driver kind of tone uh barack is on this uh does a song with him um uh john carter cash 
does it does guest oh wow guest vocals Wednesday thirteen which I had to look that one up because I don't know I don't know if that's the band's name or the guy's name but it, anyway <clears throat> um, Randy Blythe from Lamb of God does a song with him uh, Hank three which is Hank Junior Junior it's also gonna have uh, Lee Ving from Fear um, Fear you remember Fear. Uh, the, they were like a, I think they're like a hardcore kind of punky band. No fear clothing. Uh, punky punky Brewster. Did they start the no fear clothing line. Uh, negative, sir. The, that was no, no. Well, I was actually I was watching the the light the torch live feed last night, and they had their first show in New York. Yeah, yeah badass. And the bass player was wearing a fear hat. It said fear on it. Uh, I wonder if that's the band. I guarantee it. He's all. I think uh, Lee Lee Ving, which is not his real name. Um, just say it real fast, leaving. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's that might be a pretty cool album, you know. It's not one I'd keep in heavy rotation, but something to visit just to be different, man. This old country songs turn turn metal. That's pretty. Did you hear about Marilyn Manson's dick move that he did over the weekend? Sorry, mm-hmm. it's a dick move. He was doing a show at which Avenged uh, Sevenfold was also playing later, like after him, He's carrying a flag. I don't know what flag it was, but obviously it was from the country that they're they were in and uh showing some pride which is cool you know a little patriotism the kid was wearing an avenged sevenfold shirt and then he was at an avenged sevenfold show or a show that avenged sevenfold was going to be playing at mm. marilyn manson made him take a shirt off he said that's not my band take off your shirt and he did it the kid was like hesitant to like you know little you know reluctance there and he took off the shirt, but then he, like, immediately put the flag, you know, over. And, and Marilyn told him, put your flag up, hold your flag up. I, I think he realized, like, halfway through that, that he was being a dick. Flag? What he flag? had, like, a flag, like, from the country that they're from or something. Oh, okay. You know, and, and I couldn't tell, you know, what it was. But I think that's an ass move, man. That was, uh, that, that was just, well, that, that, look, dude, that dude needs to quit. Uh, Miss Marilyn's been having some issues. His music mean, sucks. He's Sorry. been having some meltdowns on stage. Have you seen this? Yeah, well, from like a cross like falling on his head and no, and, uh, but and there was this. some other and then, things. And then, uh, one of his set like props like fell over on him, and everybody acted like he died, even though the thing weighed like nine pounds. Yeah, but even before that, like he was he was going he was rambling on the mic in between songs, and then he cut a show short and was <clears> just <throat> talking nonsense through the mic. He was clearly inebriated. So God, God complex. He pulled like a puddle of mud thing. Is somebody's interviewing Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie. Right. So <laughs> twist. Somebody's uh interviewing Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie about their tour. Twist. And Marilyn Manson just comes out and says that yeah, I used to I used to urinate in their catering on tour. Oh, nice. And he's not joking yeah. or anything. And Rob just kind of skated over it. Well, I guess sometimes you gotta you gotta urinate in people's food. I don't know. It's funny that you have a gaming chair and I'm the only one that games. You know why I got it? I'll show you right here. Put a guitar here. That is nice. That's that's the only reason I bought this chair. That's not worth a couple hundred dollars, though. It's not worth three hundred bucks. That's great because I got this for ninety nine bucks. Oh, Office Depot. Little Black, bargain Black Friday. You. No, I just know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm ask me the price of anything. I'll get it pretty damn close. You know, uh, I'm a shopper, man. I always th- I also think it's odd. That you have every game console known to man, the newest, latest, I greatest, do everything. I have the Nintendo Switch. And I game. I, I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out what it is, what it does. Anyway, you have all the systems. It. When they come out with the new one, you got it. And I game more than you. <clears throat> and I only have one. Hold on. I turned on every game system, both my Xbox Ones. <laughs> you turned them on. <laughs> both, both my Xbox Ones, the One S and the One. And then I turned on a PlayStation 3. I turned on the Wii U, and I turned on a PlayStation 4 and, the other day and updated them. And then you turned them all off. I turned them off. Yeah. It gave me something to do for like 30 minutes. Have you seen the new uh, God of War game? Everything I see regarding gaming um, is this PUBG. Okay, well, it's been years. Player Unknown Battleground. It's been years since they've no, came out with a God this. of War. They had God of War 1, 2, and 3, and I think 3 came out in like, 2013 or somewhere in there <laughs> sounds like uh, a metal song anyway man the, everybody's just going crazy about the story the voice acting the immersion you, that it have puts you played in. it no it's done like a it's like a you know kind of like the uncharted stuff's done really well you know there's a lot of production value i think i played that these. for like five minutes yeah um but anyway everybody's just going off about the graphics and this and that and 
I'm interested in trying it. I just didn't know if you I I'm more seen anything about I'd, it. I'd I'd rather have like a game that was graphically average but had playability. You know what I mean? Like it's just like the actual player experience was more fun. I'm not as much into the graphics and the reality looks and how everything reacts. I'm more into the game being fun. Well, this is about the story, really. It's really supposed like, to. I mean, I'm fine playing it, Candy Crush. Supposedly, it sucks you in. As, as far as me gaming, though, like I marriage. Like, I have to have uh, multiplayer just ru- <clears throat> just ruined me. Um, I have to play with other real people. Or I what get was bored. the first multiplayer you ever did? Um, Unreal? No. Uh, Unreal t- Tournament? I was late to the game, so it was... I, I get it. Late to the game. It was... I think it was Kill Zone 3. Really? I think. Did you ever watch The Wizard of Oz? Many times. I'll go ahead and admit, the only time I ever watched it was when I queued up the Pink Floyd album to go along with it. You would have to pop in the VHS of uh, Wizard of Oz, and at the third lion's roar of the MGM lion in the, in the beginning, you would press play That's right. on the CD of Dark Side of the Moon. And the movie and Dark Side of the Moon kind of went hand in hand. Now, I'd heard a, a rumor that Alan P- Parsons uh, was a big fan of the movie, and he is who recorded that album, so he kind of made it somehow he st- structured it so it would w- it would work like that weird but it is what it is and um so but i i could only get it like for me like 20 minutes in i'm like okay i'm not seeing where the video and the audio kind of are, are matching up anymore mine had the opposite effect when i did it <clears throat> um it worked beautifully like <laughs> Like all the way through it, or just like me, like I, about twenty minutes in, it was like okay, it's not really doing anything. No, nah, for me, the whole record when the record repeated, I think that's when it started to kind of lose it a little bit. But one, but it, the whole record from start to finish, well, it goes <clears throat> right with it, sequenced almost. The, the two parts that stand out in my mind is uh, when the lyrics say, "Which which is which." I forget what song. Yeah, I think I know it's what you're us. About. I think it's us and them when he Something says that, yeah. which which is which, and um, it's a black and white part where the witch flies out the window when Dorothy's in the house and the house is spinning around. See, I don't uh, know. And so that was neat. The and then when the song "Money" comes on and you hear the cash registers okay. going, yeah. Oh, I know that song very well. As yeah. soon as the song breaks in, you know, and all does it the turn to color or there, something? It turns to color oh, right wow. at that right at that section. See, maybe I need so. to go back and watch. The YouTube yeah. version of it, kind of like you remember, like in the nine, like in the early nineties, they had these, like this artwork. It was like a, like a, painting of some sort that you could stare at it and oh, see yeah. like a hidden image. It would take a while, but yeah. I dude, my uh, my baby mama mama had one of those. All right, and they brought it home and like put it on the wall, right? And I could never, I, I could never find the image could never see it everybody really? will say oh yeah look it's a you know and i'm like don't say what it is you never saw it once not never one. saw it once and and i'd go over there you know it was like that i just i that was like my like second home so i could just go over there and chill whenever like any any time of day night 24 hours a day didn't matter i could just walk through the door and just pop on the couch and sit back and watch tv they didn't care it was cool you know and uh i so sometimes man I'd, I'd go over there and there wouldn't be anybody in the room and i'm i'm like Staring at it, going, I don't <laughs> see. Was somebody coming? No, I'm not. Man, why can't I see this, dude? Right. Everybody else has done said that what it is. Must have been. So now I'm sitting here trying to find what they just said it was, and I, and I forget. I think it was like Paul Revere riding his horse or something retarded like that. And I'm like, that, I don't see. That must have been so nothing. frustrating. Oh, it's, it, and that's I still to this day can't do it. Cannot see it. Hmm. You've tried many others versions uh, of the well i mean throughout the years yeah you know i'd, I'd be walking and see one and I'm like oh let me see if i can see this one damn it so what do you got going on here with the the monitor stuff so we're gonna we're gonna try something here that's good um, now are we talking like the type of crack that needs you know brillo uh well you'll see uh basically uh 
Um, this is Guess That Crack, obviously, and we're going to see how well you do. Um, just so that, you know, the subject matter, this is going to be celebrities. And so we'll see how celebrity. well you, how well celebrity you do. Cra- celebrity crack. So basically, I'm going to show you a crack, and you're going to try to guess whose crack it like is. Driveway, foundation. Uh, a body crack. Oh, like a butt crack. Oh wow, nice. We have. I, I I feel like I should put that gum that I just spit out back in my mouth. So are you ready? So let's try. Uh, ready as I'm gonna guess be. that crack. Okay, here's crack number one. Now how the hell am I gonna guess that? <laughs> that ain't me, is it? That is that a. I. I I'll give you two. That, that, hold on. That, now, that's a really flat. That, that's a little bit of a small crack. So, I'll give you, hold, hold on. Give me a clue. No. Was it, give me, give me a clue. No, no, no. Was it a, a 90s actress? Because that, hopefully that's not a guy because I don't see any fuzz. I'll give you two guesses each. So, you just two. <clears throat> these are celebrities. So, two uh, two guesses each. So who, Like big celebrities? Like big, big, like really well-known just, celebrities? Or yeah, like well-known. Somebody that's been on TMZ once. Yeah, well, no, well-known. All these are well-known. Were they active in the 90s? Or is this like modern day crack? Like, so Selena Gomez. This like, one was active. Hers is bigger than that. I'm, 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 I'm guessing so. This one was active in the 90s, yes. Okay. 80s? Probably not so much. Okay. You need to stare at it more? Or? It's, it's not Ben, ben Stiller. I'm just, I'm just trying to think 90s. Jim Carrey. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm not thinking that that's who's cracking. I'm just trying to think. Ben Stiller, though, made me think of. Because he was in that movie's uh, something about Mary. Cameron Diaz, was that was that Cameron Diaz? There it is, man. Yeah. That's Cameron, Cameron Diaz. Diaz. Did you cheat? We need uh, theme music. I should gent for a second. Jump, okay. Jump, jump, jump. Guess that crack. Give, give that a shot. I can't even. What is that? <laughs> is that is that taken with a Motorola Razor flip phone? <laughs> I'm trying to. I, I can't. I can't even read. I'm trying. I can't to, even read. Here, the, the resolution. What? What did you? Did you get this from their actual phone? Is that a guy? Is a chick? Guy? I can't. Fly. This is a singer. I don't see the crack though. It's <laughs> right in that area. I, that is so blurry. I can't even tell what it is. Active in the seventies. Active in the seventies. Is it a celebrity musician? What? <laughs> Steven Tyler. That's not crack. <laughs> that's not, man, that's that's bowl of fruit, homeboy. I just, I just had to just <laughs> get, come on, bro. I mean, not, nothing against a man, but I really ain't, ain't up to looking at that. Come why on. Do you, why do you get ple- take pleasure <laughs> in making me look at another man's bowl of fruit? Look at those pecs, though. That, is, that front, is that front crack? That, uh, it looks like groin crack. That honestly, yeah, that, that that looks like groin. Is it front or back? It's back. It's a back crack. Oh my god! That is that 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 is a chick, right? I mean, guessing because then hopefully no guy would be wearing that unless because we already been through. Ask some questions. I give you Tyler. some clues. I can't even begin where to go with that, man. Why? For number one, number one question: Why would you do this? I don't know why you're enjoying this so damn much. There you go. <laughs> man, why are you doing? <laughs> That's horrible. Get down. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, Governor Crack. All right. This, this ain't another guy, is it? Like the Arnold? I mean, because you done. No, this is a, this is a <laughs> mattress actress. That's a porn star. <laughs> Bukaka. Give, give it a shot. I, you haven't guessed. There's since just the not first enough. In, there's not enough information Dude, for that. So I mean, it, all not kinds an actress. Of information. Right not there. an actress. So musician? Nope. Singer? Musician? No. Not an actress. On TV or something? She's famous for being famous. Being on oh, that's Kardashian ass. There you go. Simple as that. That's all you gotta tell me. No talent. Ugh. Oh, Ugh. <laughs> God. oh poor oh. now I understand why Kanye is such a douche. <laughs>